Hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Between the Rolls Iron DM on Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Hey everybody, it's what I said it was earlier and now I'm just going to slow down a second, take a break and smell the snow covering the roses. Ah, oh, you know what? Oh, that's loud. That is loud. I should have turned the Twitch volume down a little bit before I did that. You just like to hear yourself. I Sucker. really do all the time and then read the comments telling me how wonderful I am, how I, I should kill those. the party. and <laughs> ah, It's great. All right. Before we get everything exciting, let's go ahead and say the things we got to say. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. If you want to take a look at our YouTube archive, you can do that there. As well as call the link to uh, listen to our audio only version of these shows. Almost and caught up. Almost caught up. Ooh. You'll never catch up. That's the thing about d and I'll catch up next week. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't you dare make me a liar, Frank. I'll make a 30-hour episode. You'll never have it uploaded in time. We're going to finish the campaign in one night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I won't be playing 30 hours. You won't be playing 30 hours in one night? That's a shame. No, I think my work would kill me if I take any time off for that. Uh, for sure. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Well, if you want to talk to these boring people, you can do that on our Discord channel. If you want to buy some cool shit, though, also follow one of the links. You can get some Murder Hobo merchandise, a shirt. It's not very comfortable. A phone case. It'll break your phone instantaneously. What? Or a shower curtain. You can see right through it, and it makes your penis look a lot smaller. Depending if you're looking. <laughs> you look it distorts it. It's like a funhouse mirror, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. That being said, if you're trying to look fitter, it makes you look fatter. I don't know. It's some strange, strange shower curtains there. Uh, after that, I'd like to thank several people. First off, I'm going to thank Dee, our character portrait artist. Yeah. She got in a thank war with me over email this past weekend. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I'm the one who's the face and I get to broadcast it out. I therefore win by thanking you again, Dee, for all the wonderful <laughs> oh. portraits you made. Shoe dropped. Bam. Bam. Then, thank to our wonderful sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you roll like my party did last <laughs> Thursday, get some Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, we're gonna Carrie, purchase I need some a for set! You. They're going to roll all 13s and 1s. Because really, those are the two exciting numbers in the whole bunch. And finally, we'd like to thank Oddfish Games. If your game stinks, get some adventure stents. Brighten up the nose room. Oh, I would like putrid sewered pirate dog dice. <laughs> it's a combination of the two. Putrid so I can give it a whiff dice. as I roll it. Be like, oh, D20. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Petris, petrified Steve, the puppy. Uh, poop. For everyone yes. who's watching, uh, the producer has promised me some dog poop dice. Thanks <laughs> to Steve, our secret sponsor. Uh, and again, <laughs> back to. <laughs> Back to Oddfish Games, a big shout out to their Shine project. If you're trying to write up something, you know, if you're coming up on something on the spot, you need to flesh it out a little bit. Get their Shine project. Ask all the right questions to give you all the wrong answers. I think that's everything. Yep. Yeah, thank. <laughs> thank so. Thank you again, D. Uh, did it again. Sucks to be you. You can't refute me. Oh, He's going to thank her like 1,500 times now. The, the next She's going... picture should be outstanding, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's him in front of a Murder Hobo Inc. shower curtain. <laughs> <laughs> that is strange because she wants to do the DM portrait. So it's going to be me as a DM. <laughs> Wearing a robe on the shower curtain. <laughs> do it! God, do it! Just watch it. Do it, D. Do it. I'll have Make to it a her. shower curtain. That would be awesome. I'll have to tell her. <laughs> All right, guys. One thing we do on this show is we like to recap the uh, shows we did this previous week. Thursday, the Cred Campaign. Saturday, the Calamity Campaign. And the Tri-Generational Margu campaign on Sundays. I'm sorry, we got to make you wait for the Iron DM where these three DMs 
showdown in a cage match of awesome storytelling. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Snap it to a Slim Jim. But first, let's get fishy with it. With the cred campaign. Carol, you were a part of that. I have no idea. Wait. What happened? You're not going to let us into Well, fine, I'll introduce myself and we can do it as there we get go. to each other. So, hi, everyone. Somehow first take of all, longer than five minutes, Carol. Go for it. I will try not to. Hi, everyone. First of all, I will just, so I'm Carol. I am the longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commission mini painter. And I play in the cred campaign. Uh, what happened this week? Uh, a hurricane happened last this week. week. Last week. Yeah, technically, you're right. It is last week. Uh, a hurricane happened. Someone's doing the 420. No, it's not me. I wish. I probably feel better right now. Uh, Yes, uh, let's see. Kyle sent a hurricane after us, and uh, that was it was not a natural hurricane because uh, instead of, you know, normal lightning, it um, it sent out uh, bolts of green fire that set the ship's mass on fire. Uh, It also was pitch, pitch, pitch black. At least that was the impression. It was like night. Um, oh, and it was, and uh, otherwise the winds and waves, and we kept falling off the boat uh, and getting back on. That was like, oh my God, we get somebody back on, then it felt like somebody, else, and I fell off. I figured it was going to happen like 20 more times, and that would just be the whole episode. But no, 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 we actually got through the freaking storm. And we we're wondering how in the hell are we going to find land or get out of there with a boat with no sails, no rudder, no way of steering, no way of propelling, no nothing. And we all go to sleep and wake up the next day. And there we are. There's the, the island. At least I think it's the island. Our captain said it was the island. And we got on a rowboat to head into to head into the island. And some deep ones, a couple of deep ones, attacked us. And that's where we're leaving it off, is in the middle of the attack. Uh, uh, which is probably a good thing, because all our dice rolls were just terrible. I mean, my last round, I rolled, I get two attacks and I rolled two twos. It was great. You know, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, that's how it goes. And I'm keeping this short because I want to get to Iron GM. And also to give you something to watch in the archives and on the Twitch channel while it's still up there for the next, it's up there for two weeks. So it was a lot of fun. Um, Definitely. I'm having a blast playing. It's the best campaign on this channel. Not even in the top three. I'm the DM of that campaign and I don't think it is. What are you talking about? It's a good campaign. What do you mean it's not the top three? I think it's Brute and Shreddery. It, it's like eight. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Out of the four campaigns that are on this channel, it's four? eight. Oh, well, Fred, yeah, that's Calamity, right. Calamity, Margu, and of course, Cacophony. Cacophony, because then you admitted it's a campaign. I've been saying cacophony has been a we're campaign the whole time. We're Finally! We're still not going to call it that. Yeah, uh, so. he just, Definitely not. I hate to tell you, he just did. So, it's a campaign. To be fair, I was going to say Calamity, Cred, Margu, and the previous campaign that is now over. But still in our YouTube archives, if you want to take a look. <laughs> so that was, it was different. Such an awesome campaign, too. All and right. that would be it. Wow. You didn't even leave the big cliffhanger about what's happening to one of your uh, one of those members is almost certainly going to die next time at the very beginning. At the very least, one of them is going at to the die. Very hey, least. things are yeah, things are a little uh, because I know if I recall, let's see, Jeremiah actually Jeremiah fucked up one of the deep ones if I recall. Like you said, there's a lot of blue blood in the water. Uh, mm, inky, yeah, blood. Sure, that's oh, what that's or, what it is. Well, I don't know what it is. I mean, I was hoping that Guys, there might actually go back be useful. And watch on Thursday. Go back on Thursday and watch it. I was hoping. yourself. Watch as I try to kill my players and that damn Jeremiah NPC, because I'm done trying to sound like a guy going through puberty. <laughs> Which brings Love us it. to our next campaign. Speaking of puberty, the five of these people all together have about enough maturity to 
probably be a prepubescent. But speaking of which, this is for mature audiences only. And uh, David, why don't you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about that campaign. Hi, I'm David. I play Zadar in the Cacophony Adventures, and uh, I play Ingve in the Calamity Campaign. Speaking of Calamity Campaign, I'll give you the recap. Um, okay, basically our intrepid heroes from the town of Ba, or village of Ba, uh, pick up right where they left off after facing a vampire in the haunted wardens un warrens underneath what? the what <laughs> what campaign are you in calamity <laughs> right yeah wait was it a vampire yeah from two weeks ago or two yes. sessions ago yes oh. yeah yeah i don't break your wrong okay. day <laughs> <laughs> go I back and watch it I didn't it was a it bit doff Okay, oh, it was a skeletal yeah. vampire. Okay, so. <laughs> probably. That's, that's I will say this console. is why some people like my campaign because I'm an honest DM and I remember everything that happens every single session. I do know what you're talking about, but I don't know if it's there are things that also bite and suck blood, so it may not be a vampire. We're saying it's a vampire, and that that's why I'm leading it into this because yeah, we are. Fair. Pardon my language, we are fucking convinced that it is a vampire and that Rakir is keeping a close eye on Doth. That's where I was going with that. So there. No, he anyway. isn't anymore. <laughs> as far as we know. Oh, you guys spoiler! <laughs> we still no. suspect he's a vampire. Yeah, but, but didn't you guys let well, Doth... Let me get to it, Carol. Let me get to it, okay? Gosh, Carol, come on. <laughs> Say on your own. Uh, oh, okay. Rude, man. Rude. So let me, we pick up where we left off after the encounter in the Warrens. Uh, we track uh, the, the wagons uh, to where they're headed. Uh, we spot one of the, uh, was it a cage, Frank, or was it an actual a cage that had been cage wagon. Cage, cage wagon. Wa cage wagon that had been left on a bridge surrounded by lizard folk. Anyway, we dispatch the lizard folk, continue tracking. The tracks lead off into a mire-like swamp, kind of like tar pits with geysers spouting all over the place. So we had to navigate that. As we, uh, we end up, uh, our intrepid uh, ranger, Azari, guides us through it. Unfortunately, it's nightfall. We have to camp, camp, uh, camp within the um, within the swamp itself. Come daybreak, we pick up the tracks again. We find out that there is a divergence. One, uh, there was two other wagons. One headed uh, in one direction. One headed in the other. We had to choose, choose one. And we encounter uh, the wagon. We find it, and it's sinking. Uh, the it's sinking into the mire uh, as it's partially submerged with the cage. There's two members of our village trapped inside the cage. So we had to get them out. That required some skill checks and we didn't do well. <laughs> so, but we did manage to get, get two of them no, out. No, don't alive. tell them. Okay. okay. So maybe there was more than two. We don't know if any of We them don't know. Around. Well, you'll find out. Some may be so. dead, some may not. Watch the yeah. show. Ah. So anyway, so so we backtrack again. Have to spend another night in the swamp. Uh, yeah, we end up encountering countering of all things freaking grungs grungs. So if you followed our B Squad adventure, yeah, we fucking hate those things. So anyway, that's weird that they would appear like that. Yeah, in a in a swamp. <laughs> Strange. That's strange. You know, creative license by our DM there. Anyway, <laughs> so basically the episode ends with us fighting the Grungs at, uh, in that. And then, uh, yeah, we have to pick up the chase through the mire uh, right where we left off. And that's the episode, folks. If you want to check it out, check it out in the archives. You can also check it out on Twitch. It's still, it'll still be on Twitch. And you can see, say, see all the hilarious things that carol said about our campaign in the chat if you watch it on twitch 
So. Hey, I got a I got a question though. Now, did didn't Doff go off with your family members and stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You let and... him go off with your family members, suspecting he could be a vampire. Mm -hmm. That's for that's kind of fucked up carol carol really he's funny. not a vampire <laughs> we don't know for sure Holly we don't know Sturge honestly honestly I rick here I is worried about is. two things one Dolph Dolph taking all the credit for rescuing the, the well, villagers that's fair and the possibility that we may come back to <laughs> a village of undead by the time we get that, would back. Be that would be frank i don't see you doing this though you totally I'm trying to figure out what game David played in on Saturday. It was. I don't remember how. <laughs> he, he's well, messing with you, you folks. Know, Just you, watch the episode. And you drink that much when you're GMing. That's not really surprising. If you, could see, if you could have seen the green room before we went live, oh my God, Frank was hysterical. Raging. Yes. Raging alcoholic. A raging alcoholic. So. <laughs> well, just because I explained that the walls of the anus are the thinnest part of your body, and that is where you apply alcohol directly to go ahead and get a quick contact uh, buzz. I thought you literally. That's how we opened our episode. <laughs> Commenting on butt chugging, which we don't recommend. Anyway. You know what? Strangely enough, I started my episode talking about masturbation heavily until my penis was about to fall off so it was a uh, it was a uh, that kind of uh that kind of week it sounds a, like that, those Mature seven viewers that you saw at the nice. beginning are like nope fuck these guys yeah. <laughs> yeah. we better get on. to the iron dm shit soon that's fine it, frank introduce so. yourself tell us what happened on sunday thank you david for saturday yeah, yeah, try to be accurate about it, Frank. <laughs> can I was remember? there, man. I, I, I can you know. remember Sunday? <laughs> I, I can remember <laughs> Sunday. Folks, I am uh, Frank. Let's see I what am. happened was, <laughs> shit, I can't read my handwriting. Um, they went chasing after something, and it was great. Folks, uh, Sunday is the Margu slash tri-generational slash Frank campaign because there's Four Franks in that campaign. It is a giant clusterfuck. Uh, three generations of the same family play D and D together. It's always going to bring about hilarity. In the previous episode, Felix the Rogue was kidnapped when he let his, uh, shall we say, emotions get the best of him. He ended up getting tied up by a bounty huntress uh, who escaped with him. Uh, the rest of the party eh, gave chase. Finally, uh, unfortunately for the mount that Felix was looped over, uh, it hit a group of sailors and pinned one of them underneath. The huntress took off, fearing her immediate capture and possible disposition to the forces of the law, uh, and left Felix rolled off in a bush. Uh, the party subsequently arrived and for some reason took offense at these poor naive sailors and fucking killed them. Uh, they are under a time constraint to get to a set of ruins uh, and retrieve a jewel. 10 days have been given uh, to them by the Sisters of the Moonlight and they are on the end of day three. They have, however, found the fortress. It is not, shall we say, intact. It is in a crevice and sits precariously in a triangle formation. Uh, these guys found uh, Favored of Loth and a few other surprises, including a giant goat that caused unprecedented problems. Uh, that game will continue this Sunday as they continue the exploration of the ruins and probably find a shitload more spiders. Uh, I highly recommend it. Those were the guys that actually got me to do uh, live streams uh, several years ago. And, so uh, if you have someone to blame, it's them. It's them. It's definitely yeah, it's totally them. The Orsinas are directly responsible for that shit. I think they're crazier than the rest of us, too. Uh, no. I know. S small story. Uh, they have three battle chickens. And so uh, the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. Uh, during the encounter with the sailors, uh, Frank, Middle Frank is a uh, bardic sorcerer. Uh, multi-classed and he specializes in wild magic when he decided to cast something uh the house rules kicked in 
wild magic kicked in. And not only did he Eldridge blast one at third level, he misty stepped as he did so making a miraculous entrance. He then called for the battle chickens and with a nat 20, they followed. So he is the ruler and king of the battle chickens. So I cool. Hate it. So cool. That, that is Margu. It is in the archives. It is still on Twitch. Take a look at it. Uh, be prepared. Uh, the humor is juvenile, but it is funny to a certain extent. I find it hilarious. And that is the Margu campaign. Back to you, Kyle. Yes, I am unmuted. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> Let me check. I wasn't even going to start talking this time around. All right, guys. It is Iron DM number three. In this corner, that corner, and that corner, we've already made the introductions, so I'm not going to make it again. I feel like I only need the edge of my seat. Ah, you should. You should. (laughs) I I feel like we need names, you know? We need, like, wrestling. We need, like, wrestling, wrestlers' names, you know? I think I gave you guys wrestler (laughs) names or at least wrestler introductions last time. I forgot I did that, and I was going to do it again, but then... Uh, I was masturbating, so I didn't have time. A sticky keyboard oh, had to clean that up. <laughs> wow. Well, that reaction was consistent Trust me, across the, the board. The humor yeah. gets worse from here, guys. Wait till you get the pranks. <laughs> I have got it locked. <laughs> oh, he does. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so first one we had everyone rolled random numbers on a table created a one shot out of that previous time we gave our players a map they had to design a one shot around that as well as make some descriptions of the map this time we have given the players the same setting with the same characters we have a house on a hill a npc by the name of birdie and a villain by the name of Steve. What we do have different, though, is I had them roll for a genre to run their one shot. They do have requirements. They have to have three encounters. They have to have a unique trap to their genre. And what else do I have? I, I... <laughs> yep, we lost Frank again. Mute yourself, Frank, so we can at least get through everybody else's. <laughs> All right, we'll come. He's to you looking last at his. Later. He's looking at his and cracking himself up, folks. So <laughs> this was essentially our green room today. Yeah, happy four twenty, y'all. Happy four twenty. I know. All right. So to get started tonight, we had uh, David. And the reason David is going first is because he decided to re-roll because he didn't like his genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, what'd you get first as your genre? Uh, first, I got comedy. Two, comedy. Comedy. Yeah, so That's I rolled right. again, got four, and got mystery, which kind of goes with the idea that I had. Anyway. It goes with mystery. <laughs> so when you judge who's the Iron DM tonight, keep in mind... David had to roll twice and take mm-hmm. the one he preferred. Penalty! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, penalty right there. <laughs> All right. So, your players are walking <clears throat> over the crest of a hill and they see a house on the hill. What do they see, David? Out front, there is a little girl uh, standing out front. Her name is Birdie. All right. In front of the house of the hill. Uh, She (laughs) tells you that her parents are missing. And uh, her and her parents had just moved into the house, which kind of has a sordid history. Uh, It seems to be passed down from generation to generation. They were the last to inherit inherit it. Uh, After uh, the previous members of the family that owned the house disappeared. So... So Bertie enlists the help of the party uh, to find her parents, but she also believes that there's that they're being held by monsters in the basement. So nothing makes sense. Unfortunately, Bertie's only five years old. So I hate 
kids. And <laughs> so. All right. So you got a mystery. What, what is the, uh, the mystery is the parents gone missing. We don't know mm-hmm. what's going on. They've been missing for a while. Been yeah. A couple of weeks for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. This poor child. Okay. Mm-hmm. Six cents. It's a twist is the five-year-old dead. Fuck you, Kyle. <laughs> oh, man. Did Actually, I call it? Did I call yeah, it? Yeah, you called it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Penalty, no, penalty hello. Two. <laughs> so yes. the question is, we base this on the sixth sense or maybe death house. Death house, you fucker. That's what I based it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's roll through it a little bit here. Uh, we have three encounters. What three mm-hmm. encounters are we trying Okay, I had to roll it back a bit because uh, we had to pick our our level. Death House is definitely not a level one uh, encounter. So I had to roll it back. Uh, Basically, I'm making it a mystery. Yes, Birdie is dead. You find her corpse in in the attic. She had been starved to death, just like the children in Death House. Uh, The three encounters that I have are mostly animated um, objects, uh, kind of like Death House animated armor. And the thing that I like the most is the animated broomstick in the closet. Uh, that is that that is an encounter too. Um, uh, the, uh, throughout the encounter, I was going to kind of make it Scooby-Doo-ish, is that there's cultists hiding in the, hall, in, in the house. Okay. It's the cultists that have Birdie's parents who are actually still alive down in the basement so (laughs) so as you fight your way through uh the encounters are are the animated objects that's one uh the cultist that's two there's a boss fight in the basement of course and then uh the uh the the trap slash puzzle that i have actually actually triggers the third encounter so basically i'm using the the puzzle of paintings from tasha's cauldron of everything so basically what you spell out from the seven paintings uh what you rolled before is the the creature that emerges from the painting and that's that's the encounter so if you spell out owlbear boom owlbear appears so is it an owlbear? Mm, it could be. Mm. Oh, okay. I was just wondering yeah. if you had what it yeah. was yet. But okay. Yeah. So we got the crazy trap slash puzzle. We got our mm-hmm. three encounters. The pillars. We have the compad with the animated objects and the cultists exploration. Mm-hmm. You get to find this dead girl's body in the attic as well as... Mm-hmm. How are we getting down to the basement? Uh, that's funny because just like Death House, uh, you find Birdie's bird, uh, dollhouse. You look in the dollhouse, you see, which is a replica of the house, there's a trap door, uh, basically activated, uh, from inside the gallery. If you moved, uh, you saw the puzzle painting and you move a painting uh, uh, aside, uh, you touch the painting, it opens the trap door and it's uh, not really a trap. It's just a secret door that with stairs that leads down into the basement. So. All right. And the last thing I've asked is uh, describe one room in your house. The party walks in. What do they see? Uh, the first thing that they see, they actually see the, the puzzle first. And that, that will probably be the first encounter. Uh, it's the gallery of the house. You know how when you walk into a foyer, uh, you know, in some grand homes, you walk into the foyer, uh, there's like a gallery of paintings around. And no, they're not casting vicious mockery, Frank. Uh, that's, the, that's the puzzle so that they'll have to solve eventually. So uh that takes place in there so when you emerge into the house the first thing you see is the gallery you'll you'll circle back to that and you'll have to solve the puzzle of the paintings so all right so there is our mystery house on the hill that for first level adventures correct yes just to make sure i remember now there's 
there uh what you think is the boss in the basement is the head cultist and all that you dispatch him there's uh there's a treasure box you rescue rescue birdie's parents you go to loot the treasure the treasure is a mimic named steve there we go (laughs) (laughs) knew there was gonna be a mimic somewhere tonight Uh yeah Yeah. come on it's a first level thing come on i know it's not it's it's yeah yeah i couldn't have it be death house that would have been awful yeah first level you know the dollhouse thing though that reminds Uh me wasn't there something like that in curse of strahd too yeah, Death House Death is, House is Curse of Strahd. Oh, Strahd. that's what you're t- Oh, mm-hmm. you are. Oh, see, I was thinking like yeah. you're referring to some movie I've never heard of. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I remember. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was thinking that of House is great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Grindhouse that's how, Pictures. Yeah, that that was. Which what is what Frank scenario. based his one shot on. <laughs> I, I was gonna have it something like based on Cabin in the Woods, but I was just like, oh, "Wow, that could be really the- bit of, <laughs> that could be really bad." <laughs> that would be so. That there's a lot in there, though. You'd mm-hmm. be like, "That's that'd be like comedy, a horror, mystery." Oh yeah, oh, it's, all it's the not good just stuff. that. It's yeah, sci-fi. How many, how many different things were in that how in that cabin too? It's like oh, you would be just- there. That you run a campaign there. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many different things in there, uh, and yeah, unleash that on the world at the end. It's just like, oh my god, <laughs> the murder! So. I think it had the murder corn, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. the murder unicorn. I think. <laughs> I How love do that you movie. run a campaign based on Cabin in the Woods? I, come on, we're, we're 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 creative. We could do it. Oh, yeah, could do uh, it. All right, watch for Iron DM number four. But we got to finish this <laughs> one to first. watch the movie again. It's been a while. <laughs> the Mystery House on the Hill by David. All right, moving on mm-hmm. to Carol, who did level four. Uh, Carol, real quick, what did you roll? Uh, I rolled. I got. See, I rolled twice. Well, actually, I rolled three times because the first time I rolled three was times. a ten. Because the first time I rolled was a ten. Which meant I had to roll twice more and make something based on. Okay. Fortunately, okay. now here's the hilarious thing. Of course, for, I was actually thinking exactly what if rolling. So talk about working out because I got a crime thriller. There you go. The house on the hill. Was so, this, by the way, is this based on the board game by that name? I've never heard the, of that board game. There's a, never there, heard of it. I believe I've heard it's of called Death House. house though. I not. believe it's called. It's a board game called House, House on the Hill. Uh, it's not one of my. A lot of people like it, but it's not one of my favorites, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so um, you got a crime thriller. Yeah. Your party crests the hill and they see the house on the hill. What do they see, Carol? Do you give me they, the description of the house. Uh, they see a large, like Victorian manor. Um, but. They actually know that, 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 okay, that's the facade, but what they're looking for is a secret inside the house. Secret room, a couple of, a secret room. More than that, actually, one secret room. They are, so do you want to know why they're there? Or do you want to, uh, okay, why sure. are they there? Okay, so they are all undercover. So I'm going with uh, like uh, 20s, the Roaring 20s uh, Prohibition era. Uh, nice. I'm going totally different here. I said probably because I think I've been inspired by the fact that my hu- my husband and DJ are upstairs playing a Cthulhu Pulp. So, um, but this sort of all house in the hill just this sort of all popped to mind. So you are all if you are PCs, you are there to investigate this place. People have gone missing, and you've been sent by the police. You're all undercover policemen. Uh, to figure out what's going on. I'm going to be a Minotaur gunslinger. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it should be. Jesse's well, greatest character, who man. Said, yeah, 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 the reality is uh, I'd be probably running this in Cthulhu, not in D&D. <laughs> but you could run it in D&D. I mean, after all, you do have the whole Cthulhu thing, too, you know, that we've been doing on Thursdays. You could. I, there's no reason why you couldn't do it as a D&D game. All right, Carol. They're going into the house. Okay. What kind of encounters? What's the outline of the general one shot here? Give us the down and dirty of this crime thriller. 
All right, so what do you want me to, what questions do you want me to answer? Like the three encounters? Give the, us the three encounters. What three encounters you have? Okay, the three encounters. Actually, let me go through some of the other stuff because they all kind of tie in. Uh, Why did you ask me what to go well, through? Well, I wasn't. I wasn't sure because I, I I wasn't sure actually where you wanted to go with this. Um, I'll follow actually, you, Carol. I, You're the DM. You're all the right, iron. All right, all right. Potentially. So so I'll go. Actually, I'll start with the characters because I think that's actually where you start with Dave. So Birdie is going to be the hostess. I think that's a lot of why I thought of twenties and stuff because I imagine this this sexy lady named Birdie. Um, Birdie is kind of oblivious to what's really going on there, but she is, she's a friendly face and she's very nice. Uh, Steve, Steve, of course, is the mob boss that runs the place. Um, she doesn't realize he's a mob boss, but he does, uh, basically he does some dirty work in the house. <laughs> um, so the PCs get in there and they come into what what they said there's a speakeasy in the basement that's the first sort of crime-ish thing uh and I, that's the room i picked actually with to describe was the was that is basically it's a it's it's behind like a hidden bookcase it's a, it's a hidden door so i'll say bookcase in the library stairs that go down i'll send frank's crab fight <laughs> crab fighting <laughs> with the secret door there pops to mind but uh but anyway secret door to get in and of course you need a password to get in like all speakeasies and so then they go down they see this really cozy nice bar lots of small little tables a stage at the front um and of course a, a wooden bar that's been polished and uh paneled walls with paintings on it and uh just it's actually it's pretty nice uh, so they go in there, and the three encounters would be, the first one would be uh, them starting the investigation. So I, I would go with more like a skill challenge type thing where they could roll diplomacy checks to talk to people or, or investigation checks or perception checks to, to look for clues that might be, you know, maybe like there's a, there's a fading blood stain in one of the corners, um, things like that. Uh, talk to people to find out what you know because there's all sorts of rumors and stuff going on at this place but for funsies i'm going to throw some people who are actually you know connected with the crime family but they're just there having a drink you don't necessarily know so there might be also uh i almost said sense motive it's not sense motive in dd <laughs> what the hell is it no idea no insight 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 if you roll a Good it's inside in check right now. You'll find out that she is also high. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. No, I uh, don't do that. Uh, let's this see. whole show's just become one Cypress Hill video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so you find out different clues. Now, the thing of it is, one of my encounters might be optional. Because what I'm thinking is that there, of course, are a bunch of thugs there that are else. They may be elsewhere. They may be in the room. Um, and if they catch word what the PCs are doing, they're going to, uh, well, they're probably going to try to bounce them out of the place. And there would be an encounter there. Uh, however, the PCs are exceptionally clever. They may be able to skip that encounter. Or I may sink that encounter on them later on. I don't know as they're investigating further. Not on no. this show. They're going to fight. Mm -hmm. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, on this show, they're not that clever. Uh, let's see. Um, eventually, the, the trap. Okay, so the trap will be, there'll be a secret door that leads to a further, that goes further downward, which I believe would be what, a sub-basement? I don't know the exact term. But anyways, a lower, there'll be even a lower basement level that only really the boss and some of his legs know about. Uh, she doesn't know about it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yes, yeah, so they go down. And what's what's at the bottom anyway? Oh, yeah, there's going to be a trap door there. And what the trap is, the trap is basically if you activate it, it will, it's going to be a spell. It will be modify memory. 
and it'll hit i'm gonna make it a ranged one because why not we can be creative with this stuff it's gonna be a ranged one it'll hit every band room where you like a light flashes and now sudden you forget why you're there and you're like you just remembered oh you need to you need to actually go home for some reason we are the men in black <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's what sort of i was thinking is what kind of a trap would a would a mob boss put on his door well, one that would get you to leave and forget why the fuck you that you ever that you ever found that door. So, you know, um, so that'd be something along those lines. Um, I would I would count on fact as a GM. I count on the fact that somebody's going to make that save. Uh, if you all forget, well, I guess if you all forget and game over. <laughs> but normally, someone always makes the save. I would be really shocked if someone doesn't. Unless it's uh, on cred. <laughs> that's true, yes. Yeah. But you know what? We have never yeah, no, never mind. I'm not gonna say that I'll curse us. Uh, and we don't need to be cursed. So then when they get by that door, of course they also can disable the trap too. Mm -hmm. When they get by that door and they eventually will go down into the sub basement, what they'll find is there's a monster in the basement. Uh there there's basically Steve keeps an audio in the basement to dispose of all the bodies of his enemies. So gross. A crap monster. Nice. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> but that's what they do. They are they you they, yeah you can dispose of shit and stuff, but you could also they'll eat they'll eat whatever you give them, including bodies. So Water. that's the long and short of it. I think it would be yeah, it would be gross. Okay. All right. Any other so your questions? players have to figure out what the beef is going on with this house and that blue nosed dame. Yeah. yeah. Then find out the bent people who are all missing downstairs. I'm gonna so play. I'm gonna play a beardless off. dwarf. You know that talks like Edward G. Robertson. Say throughout yeah. the whole. <laughs> I need you to make a wisdom check. Yeah. I might be yeah. tempted. Otherwise, I'm... you're going to the big house. See. You're going to the big house. See? The, 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 thing, <laughs> the funny thing is, I think with with Birdie, I would be very tempted to actually make her sort of a red herring, like you oh, know, because absolutely. you all, because she, because you yeah. think you know that she's yeah you know, she's she's the hostess. Turns with out the she's mostest. a clout. Dave, but, she likes to shoplift all the time. Yeah, so yeah. You, she's got sticky fingers. Say. So I she's got great gams, you know. <laughs> she <laughs> I said she does. Gams, she's no dumb door, I'll tell you that. Uh -uh. But uh, well, I think the red herring would be is that you think she knows more about the organization and such than she really does. Bum, she bum, really bum. just, that's that's all she focuses on is just the speakeasy part. All right. Your investigators are in the house. They step through a doorway and they see what room and what does it look like? Give me some details. Oh, I, I did that already. I just did described that already? The, the speakeasy itself. Oh, you described it. Because that was the fun. I mean, I could do the, I could do basically the, the basement. I did the speakeasy because that was to me one of the most interesting. It's okay. Wood right, paneled right. walls, the cozy. I suppose I'll let you go with that. Dim, oh, dim lighting, of course. And it's warm and cozy. And Live set, bands? There's a bar, they, oh. Yeah. Or you have the Jazz. Small, <laughs> small, <laughs> really small combos, you know, not like a big band. There's a small stage. Well, this is the base of my house, so it's not like ginormous. So a small stage. You can have a singer with like a pianist or something like that. Hit me with the hot note and I'm, watch me bounce. I'm, I'm definitely thinking the basement. There is kind of a, I was going to say, the basement would be like a cement floored basement with shelves on the wall. Um, and there'd be the, the audio really would just kind of have free reign of the place. Sure. Serve the alcohol out of teacups. No. I know my history. No, no. I don't oh, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you'd be like, yeah, no, I was just drinking tea, officer. What did? I'm sorry. Woo! I mean, I would have had it as an underground casino. <laughs> mm. I, you yeah. could have gone that route. Yeah, I like I like the the whole pro <laughs> birdie. Maybe think of prohibition era. Yeah, yeah. Femme fatale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All um, right. Yeah, all I want right. to know that what Frank's been our dead. crime thriller fourth level. Ah, oh, it was great, wonderful. 
trying to think if I have any more questions for you. No, because I want to know what Frank's been. I really about. want. Yeah, to know I was about to say, Thanks. come on, giggles, <laughs> spill it. <laughs> All right. So before we introduce Frank, uh, we had, like we said earlier, nine genres: horror, comedy, action, mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, crime, romance, thriller, and if they rolled a ten. They had to roll two more and then combine the two together. Frank made some jokes about, you know, well, if I get this one, <laughs> I'm going to do something terrible hey, to Kyle? it. Yeah. Kyle, you realize something. There's only one genre he's really working with here, and that's comedy. That really is. You know? That's it's all, every every campaign. campaign. That's, that's what he everything knows. he ever does. It's always comedy. comedy. You forgot you know what? Oh, there's seduction oh, skills. No, no, I, I didn't I didn't forget. Uh, trust me, I did I did not forget. All right. So Frank, you decided to go with eighth level, braving day dark, deep, dangerous waters. Uh what did you roll? I rolled romance. Nice. <laughs> nice. Which means it's going to be comedy and horror, probably. You know, it, it hurts that you guys just it really does. judge me on this one. <laughs> the All way right. you were laughing, come on. I was about to say, that's, nice nice poker for a face there, Frank. That's why he has the notebook to hide his face behind. I don't know what you're talking about. There's my <laughs> map that I drew, too. All right. <laughs> Frank, the party crest the hill and they see what? Well, you know, first we have to back up a little bit oh, okay. because oh. a, a romance it involves people. And, and I'm slow a people it down. person. Yeah. That's right. Okay, got it, got it. So sure. the party has been contacted <laughs> by Bertie Bottoms. She <laughs> and her lover, Steve, are on the rock. Now, Bottoms. see, this is romance here. You guys Bottoms. are killing. So, Bertie Love on the rocks. <laughs> Ain't no surprise. Has asked because she has to cross Cooter Swamp in order to get to Steve's place <laughs> that she has never been to. So, but he, he's he's. I will got, say this is Iron DM. He had no opportunity to <laughs> no make it politically correct. He did. It's going it to get worse. When when would he make it politically correct? It's Frank. Oh, oh no, wait, no, you, he wait he you hear what the trap is. <laughs> so that, continue. You the party has arrived at Cooter Swamp. Uh, there in the middle of the swamp is a slight hill, and in the moonlight, the party sees a double-wide trailer <laughs> sitting on this hill. Birdie is the queen of this double-wide <laughs> Well, she, she yeah. wants to be the queen, but she's never been here before. So the party, being gallant, tells uh, her to go ahead and wait until they can go ahead and check on the scenario. Birdie is concerned that Steve is, it, it will will not accept her anymore and is deeply concerned. So the party wades across the swamp. Now I went ahead and put <laughs> a couple of different encounters here because who knows, you never know when you might play this thing. So as the party crosses the swamp in the moonlight, hearing a wolf howl, uh, they will trip a trigger causing a tree to fall in the center of the swamp. Okay, it is filled with tin, shards of tin that make a god awful racket. Uh, no dog is hurt, which is good, but you do hear the wolf in the background. So, as you continue to wade through, hoping that you are absolutely covered in leeches in the worst possible locations, romance, uh, you finally what? crest. You finally crest the hill. If you had leeches on your penis, that would really ruin the romance, Carol. Let me paint it that picture ruin for it. you. Yeah, I was going to say, why? The, <clears throat> that's the that's anti-romance. Anti anti -romance. To be anti fair, the leech may add length and possibly girth, depending on how much it's fed. They are helicopter leeches. Again, I did not have time to clean this up for PC. <laughs> so as you, as you go up this swampy, wet mess, you reach the crest of the hill where this beautiful double wide is. It's in a little bit of a, shall we say, dilapidated state. The party, if they get their rolls right, will notice a large chain uh, that circumvents underneath the double wide where the lattice is broken. 
So as they approach the rickety old stairs leading to the only doorway here, uh, they'll be able to hear strange music. But then they'll hear the rattle of the chain for their first encounter. Uh, good old Steve has a yaunty abomination chained to his uh, double wide as a guard dog. <laughs> and you got to defeat snakes uh, before you can actually get in. Now, once the party gets up, once the party defeats the auntie and gets up on the, the, the patio uh, deck. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Once the party beats Steve's snake monster, yes. they're allowed to mount the deck. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Romance. You're getting the romance, right? <laughs> there, yeah, there's a lot of romance innuendo here. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing my best. As that's my, that's as, romance. Sir. As this in some spot, it, it, David, you're from Louisiana. Tell her what romance is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Six pack and a bag of Wonder Bread, right? Anyway, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so once they get up there, the music's kind of loud <laughs> coming out of the double wide. So they can knock, but there won't be an answer. Now the double wide is in the shape of an L. Okay. So you climb the deck and you're kind of in that elbow area. Once the party checks for traps, none, they can make entry into this double wide and see a very strange collection of items, including a monkey playing drums very loudly, a tin drum. And that's what the music is. But the thing that disturbs them the most, and this is the room description, taxidermied heads adorn this wall now there are the normal ones you know uh waterborne fowl alligators uh, goblin heads things of that nature jackalope. <laughs> but there, uh, there's a jackalope there's gotta be a jackalope in there yeah. and, and a half a dozen antlers maybe even a big big frog or crawdad but the one that disturbs them the most is on a plaque and it's a woman in a turban and there's a brass plate. It's a dirty brass plate, but it says, Mama. <laughs> this is a I can romance? feel the romance hey. flooding hey. through me. Hey, I'll, allow me to do my foreplay, Carol. <laughs> you're killing my mood. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel sorry uh, the, for you, Carrie. The problem with Mama is she's right there at the corner of the double wide. So they can hear somebody moving in the long arm of the double wide, and they presume that it's Steve because Steve ain't here. Okay, you got an old bed, you know, you got some uh, ale mugs turned over. You know what? Let's just go uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Okay, we're we're just All gonna right. make this, you know, the greatest romance story <laughs> ever told. Exactly. So uh, encounter number two is of course Mama because as you try and pass by her. That turban falls off, and Mama is a Medusa head. <laughs> hmm? And the snakes actually won't, good. won't let you go by. See, he keeps Mama because he loves his Mama. There, is there a up? wait? Is there a bunch of stone <coughs> statues outside? Uh, no, the uh, uh, headstones are submerged in the water. No, 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 no. She's a Medusa. I mean, I'm talking about of all the people she's petrified. Is there a statue garden outside? That would be telling. I'm not. I'm not giving the party any notice. Uh, <laughs> but see, if they would have done their homework, you didn't in figure town, it out with the snake monster. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, as they turn the corner, there, in a dirty wife beater. And boxer shorts that are displayed. Oh, open this is romance. All right. Is Steve the drunken master monk? And he is surrounded. Think uh, Big Lebowski sitting oh, in a man. chair, covered in tin cans, and wants to know why you're in his domicile and get out. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say so, about that. So instead of combat, because that's not the point of romance, romance is about love, talking through your problems. They're going to have to convince Steve that uh, Birdie Bottoms is deeply in love with him. Now, for all of those of you who are going to be bitching 
about the non-PC that I'm about to tell you. I didn't have time to write it any other way, so just get over it. Steve! Okay, we haven't heard the <laughs> non-PC part. Okay. Here's the non-PC part. That. So if you, if you don't like stupidity, just mute me for about two minutes. <laughs> Mute now. Only, only two minutes? Steve, as they discuss the issue, they notice that his boxer shorts fly open at uh, random intervals, and he does not have a penis because Steve uh, is Stavetta. Ha ha! Steve Tootsie! <laughs> wow. Um, Who saw that coming? Okay. You can turn that back on now. <laughs> now, when he, when he said the head on the wall and he said it said mama right away uh, i just went to the x files with the peacock family man i thought that's where this was going to be going i was like never oh. never saw one episode of the x files oh man that is that episode only aired once hmm. never again it was that i mean it was awesome episode but deeply disturbing so only aired once so there you go so yeah mama is a medusa head that's still animated the trap is in the pond Trap two is different. Uh, you have to fight the dog, which is a Yon T abomination. And of course, Steve, God. <laughs> you, you can't fight because you got to talk it out because that's what love's all about. Wow. <laughs> and the producer has directly cleared out that I do not do that at all. I use seduction, seduction. She, she's calling she's calling bullshit frank you you totally should have had steve as the matthew mcconaughey character and kath cathaway man <laughs> all right all well right, then, all right. yeah but then i wanted to make him the special trick oh which, okay which right. some of our viewers might say well you know that blah blah folks i i don't care about anybody <laughs> okay i will i will treat everybody the same way so horribly if, you, if you're offended <laughs> just get the fuck out right now i don't need you as a viewer there how's that that <laughs> solves everything <laughs> viewers, wow. four viewers three view everyone's leaving <laughs> and that is eighth <laughs> level double wide on a hill in the cooter swamp. swamp i was totally expecting the, the duke voice to show swamp. up frank God. if i fleshed it out a little bit more i would Oh man! The you know the, the the uh, flamingos and the yard gnomes could have been stone statues that were petrified by mom. How's that? There you go. That's there true. That yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, or the or or it could have been in a it could have been around the back or something that the PCs would have to find, overgrown. Yeah. And to, to be fair, we only had about a half hour to get this ready. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So. No, it was no, and it was. I don't really think it's romance, but I do think it's pretty good. See, where is mine? You goes? gotta mend the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You're lucky I didn't have Maury put. Bernie yeah. Bottom oh, says there was a relationship. All Maury right, Povich guys. says All there's right, a relationship. Guys. <laughs> I ended last Thursday perfectly on time. I'm gonna do it again. Today. Yeah. Guys, this is the Iron DM. We have the. <laughs> Level one mystery, death house on a hill. We have <coughs> level four crime thriller in the dapper twenties, and yeah, we same. have eight level romance in the comments. Wow. Say who won? But to be fair, I think we all lost listening to that last one. We did. We all uh, we all we all came up losers. Whoever ends up winning is going to end up running their one shot sometime in the far what? future uh, once we all have forgotten about it. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I just lost about 10 viewers, so it really doesn't matter. So I don't it's think not going to be, be Yeah, not going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, did you, were you able to see people like pop off your. Uh, I, I don't no, pay no. attention. Yeah, I, I got you guys. That's the only thing no, I have. No, actually, up right now. we've pretty much had the same people the whole time. So, well, thanks so for that's, watching. That's us, the folks. end of yes, the show. Thank you. Thanks for watching. You know, you can catch us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. Make sure you vote there. Uh, if you want to talk to us on Discord, get the details. Maybe run this swamp hell romance for your own personal game. We don't suggest that, but you can do that. You can Notes are available. Our, <laughs> you can hit up our store with our swag, buy all sorts of murder hobo. There will be one that says seduction and the queen of my double wide romance. Just this. 
<laughs> wait, wait. Do we? Do, do you never made one that says seduction, did you? I did. I oh, never you did? posted it. It's it's. He has a pro, yeah, he has got, he's got one of my, he was going to do a, I did a campaign. One Kyle, one Kyle one she's one trying to put you time. over. She's trying to put she's you over, Kyle. No, I'm over. not. No, I'm not. Guys, we want to thank our sponsor, Dirty Dog Dice. We also want to thank Dee for the one. Dirty Dog Dice? I like it. Pirate. Pirate Dog, pirate dog Dice. <laughs> it's Pirate Dog Dice. Shut up, Carol. Uh, we also want to thank the sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 420, folks. Yeah. Romance. <laughs> That's not romance. Boy, we are cascading here. Folks. I don't care if we end on time anymore. We got that. Uh, go to Oddfish Games for their adventure sense. Whether you need to make a dank, smelly basement, a tavern in a thing, or I don't think they have. Number one love! <laughs> that set that would be Vampire sense. Den. So there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, but we are going to end right here. Everybody wave to the camera. Don't forget, you could listen to the audio podcast so you don't have to see Frank lift up his shirt. Good night, everybody. Night.